Hi, welcome back. It's Lionel Tech Lead and partner at Westfall. And today I came across an interesting topic on Quora. Basically, the question was, uh, why are the salaries of software developers and software engineers so high where anyone can le learn to code, right? And this is the topic I was browsing through and I thought it would be really interesting. And I think I would like to discuss that with all of you guys and I'm sure you want to know. So, it, while on the surface, it looks pretty straightforward. You can go online. There seems to be lots of courses on coding. There's lots of ways to learn how to code. You can even code by learning on my channel. Why are software developers' salaries so high and engineers? And now with the recent developments, they're even going higher and higher. So what are the reasons for this? Now, I'll give you some insight into it and then you can make your own conclusions from there. Now, the first reason is that software development is a performance sport. It is a skill-based sport, skill-based um, career. So this means that just because you go to the course right, and you come out, you cannot be productive in the first year. And that there are a lot of people, right, who even though they attend, they just can't make it. Now, it's not so evident to you guys, right, when you're coding, but for someone like myself who's a tech lead, I can instantly look at somebody and say, this guy is not ready to be productive. Now, it's very easy to see. You can see it through the Git commits. You can see through the work they are doing. It's so focused on the individual and it's so easy to evaluate the skill level. This is unlike some other um, professions out there where you take a course and you basically just join a group and then after that you're doing something uh, on the side or you're doing something not really related. So like this is, um, I'm trying to pick which profession I can talk about without infuriating anybody but a, a few of you guys know, let's say you, you've gone to university and you've got a business degree you so-called become a business manager, but what exactly are you doing? They don't have something where you do the work and you press the commit button and they can actually see it. So a lot of people, let's say 100% of people take these causes and by the first or three or the fifth week, you can easily evaluate these guys. Because it's skill-based, because it's so easy to evaluate, it's also so easy to evaluate people who just don't make the grade. And that cuts a lot of people out. You can't just waltz through, you can't just go and, you know, it's kind of like a math exam. If you don't pass, you can't, if you need like 70% and you get less than that, you're just not useful to the organization that you're working with. And that puts a lot of pressure on people. And that brings me to the second point, which is a, it is a tough mental job. So not everybody is suited to be a developer. Not everybody is suited to be a coder. I know for a fact that within the first two years after bootcamp, a lot of people actually drop out because of the way things are, because of that analysis and the pressure to deliver and all the, uh, how easy it is to evaluate your performance you might be better suited into another industry, maybe working with some people, maybe uh, you know doing some sort of service related thing. Like in software development, it's basically the code, that's it. You know, I don't care what you look like, I don't care what you do, deliver the code. And this really rattled some of the people and a lot of people fall out from there. Some people who are not confident in their skill set, they also drop out. So it's not so easy, we're talking 100%, I say 0.1, the skill base gets around 70% and then the other 20% probably drop out because it's just not suited for them. He, it takes a special personality, right, who um, likes solving problems, who has a good analytical experience uh, and most often not too concerned about critis criticism in this business to actually like to act, be in the software development business. So that's the second reason. The third reason is that while the salaries are high, it only happens later on. So you're seeing on the, you know, in the ads and stuff like that, the huge salaries, three, four, whatever, you know, six digits, but look very carefully and you'll find that they're only for senior positions, okay? You're not even gonna see any junior positions being advertised for because they don't look for junior developers. And I'll go into a lot more detail about this in another video. But basically, to the company, to the guys, they do not want rookie players, right? Think of a soccer team. You only got 11 players 
uh, you know, football or if you guys are uh, NFL, I don't know how many guys are there. But think about it, you only have a limited number of players, so you want the best guys on the pitch. And the performances and the results are so important that you don't have time for junior people. So they are going out there and they're saying, look, give me three years experience, give me guys who know all these languages, get all the way, blah, blah, blah. And they have great working experience, they got great teamwork. These are going to be senior developers. Now, what is happening is that if you're a junior, uh, especially in Asia, right, that the compensation isn't that fantastic. You know, for a little while, right, um, if you join a bank over here, the starting graduate kind of package would be more than uh, 3,000 US dollars. And then if you join a development firm, it would be, uh, you know, maybe 1,500 US dollars. And that would not make it enough for these people for the first two years. <clears throat> so a lot of people look at it and they realize that, um, you know, I have to take so long to reach the senior developer level where it goes up and they just don't continue. So this is a major point. It causes a lot of squeeze. We'll go into detail about the no code and how people are actually pushing out, how foreign people uh, come in and depress those prices. But basically, you don't get very many junior roles that pay very good salaries. So that is one of the big problems in the business. And when that happens, because remember, every senior developer was a junior developer at one point of time. So all this supply goes away and then the companies, right, when they're in the thick, let's think of yourself running a business. You don't have time to bring in a developer and wait for him for two years to get a custom. You want people to hit the deck, get ready, start pushing out code last week. And they're prepared to pay multiples of money. Look at Netflix, look at uh, all these guys who are growing rapidly, right? They need developers right and today on the lines and they're willing to pay but they're not willing to pay for the junior guys so that is the uh, point number three the next thing is point number four it's kind of a little, little bit intertwined but the kind of skill set that it takes to be a developer you could be a lot more professions that are going to pay just as well but much, much more relaxing. One of the best uh, industries I know is engineering. Now, engineers have a generally a very protected market. They have to get some sort of certification and then you become an engineer. They're not earning that much in Asia, but they aren't earning that little as well. So if you've got the math skills, the analytics skills, the critical thinking skills, the ability to program, you could be a data scientist, you could be an engineer, one of these very, very protected businesses, right, and careers and professions that allow you to earn that kind of money without the stress. So what happens to all these people? They all switch over there. If you, you're staring at a screen and, and you can't seem to get, you know, feel comfortable with the code, <laughs> look, that's probably not going to be for you. So there's a lot of competing industries and options for these guys to go to multiple different places, right? And there's no reason why they should subject themselves to that pressure. So the competing ability is there to pull you out there. So the supply just keeps getting less and less, you know? You see a lot of guys like, if you could finish a coding uh, masterclass, if you could bootcamp it, go in first year, rank the, the code, push commits, you could probably do a whole lot of other things as well. And then the fifth reason, right, is the high dropout rate of software developers. Now, there's, you're thinking about the first two years, usually, you know, after the first 12 months, they come out like, oh, I've got this, and they go in there, and then, you know, the pressure's too much. I mean, I have to admit, uh, a lot of agencies, a lot of tech firms, right, unless they're really like startup-y, it's like they're just straight into the boiler room, right, and, and a lot of people drop out from there. So the first two years, you get a huge number of dropouts of people. Now, I'm, I'm going to talk about the other parts of the career, right? So the next one is what we call the transition career, the five year. So you're pretty decent, but you are tired of doing software development. You're not really for you. These people will kind of move within the industry. And I, and I see a lot of these guys 
they are maybe um, product managers, they become uh, software development team managers, they become CTO level, management level, and they're away from the coding stuff. You can see that all the entrepreneurs out there, right? We're talking about Elon, Bill Gates, uh, Zuckerberg, they are all non-developers anymore. They, you know, they're probably gonna code really shit. Now, this happens around the five-year marker, and then we've got the 10-year marker, where a lot of people, if you're not, if, you know, the company's not really structured around it, and you've got a family, you've got to take kids out, like the work-life balances between developers has not been really good. And there's been a huge fallout from there because these guys, you know, you, you, you can't, uh, like when you're doing coding, right, you can't switch <coughs> modes. You can't be, you know, pushing a JIT commit and then solving a problem. And then, you, you know, play with your kids, come back and you're fair. You're like, you gotta be so in the zone, so focused on this. So a lot of people don't want this, they switch out. Um, talk about the women sector, huge issue down there. I mean, I think we need to do more for that, which is like, you know, if, if someone has kids, if they're female, like, you know, there's no support for um, developers who are female, right? This, this isn't, there's no sympathy at all about what mental you need. So all these people are going to drop out. I've seen not so much developers, there aren't that many female developers, but um, designers and product managers who have kids, like they really struggle uh, to multitask. Development is really a one-shot focus thing. So these people drop out. These are the five to 10 years, the 10 year marker, they drop out. And then finally you have the 20 year people <clears throat> who will drop out because they, they made enough money. Okay, so the last 10 years, you're gonna be raking in the dough and you just had enough. You just wanna sit on the beach, like you see so many guys like that, they're about early 40s and they're just, you know, maybe taking a consultant role or, you know, maybe just advising on coding. These people are all dropping out. So you have this huge cycle of, of people dropping out and not enough developers. Just, just huge numbers dropping from across everything. So usually what I know is that like, if you hit about 40, early 40s, you had enough of the coding, don't really enjoy it anymore. So you take a walkabout for two, three years, you come back, you become a consultant to a couple of startups. These are the best guys. These are the guys join higher salaries and they'll say, nope, I don't want to take it. I want to become a VC. Here you go. So putting all into uh, all these factors, what's happening is you have high fallout rates, high uh, analytical and um, skill requirements and then more fallout rates towards the end of it, pushing all the development pay uh, salaries up because the demand for the software developers is such that it is instant, okay? So you, like, if you do not have developers in your company, you are not going anywhere. And so I, I'll classify this as 0.6, the bonus thing is just insane immediate demand insane immediate demand and if you really think about it right <clears throat> those jobs that pay the highest are usually those critical kind of jobs where if you don't have them something bad happens we're talking about what if you don't have a top lawyer you probably you know might go to jail if you don't have a good doctor you're not going to be alive so the demand for software developers usually the company is so instantaneous right that once a company gets funding, they need to start developing now. These guys have to come in. The life cycles of these companies are so short, 10 years, you know, they have, don't have time to pull all these, so they need them immediately. So you combine all these factors, these six factors, and you have that high pay, uh, even though everyone can go to coding class, right? And basically that's the bottom line because the tech lead said so.